All right, ready to go? All right, here we go. All right, uh, still getting used to this method of preaching. Uh, this is, of course, our Sunday night uh, worship, and uh, I wish we could plug some music up in like we were doing, but seeing that we've moved all of our live streaming and all equipment uh, geared up for our Sunday morning drive-in church, um, this is the way we have to do it. But uh, anyway, uh, glad you could join us. I had a good service this morning. Uh, thank the Lord for Drive-In Church. I want to invite you uh, next Sunday for Drive-In Church at 1030 again. Uh, again, we're going to do this until uh, we have to, we will be able to meet back in the sanctuary. So uh, Drive-In Church. And then, of course, uh, Sunday nights and Wednesday nights uh, will still be coming to you uh, for uh, through live stream, Facebook, YouTube, things like that. Uh, Sunday nights, look for us around 4.30, 5 o'clock, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, the Sunday night service will go up. And then, of course, Wednesdays, we've been doing it around anywhere between 12 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We've been doing that. Of course, they, they stay uploaded on the, on the uh, church page, on my page, on my wife's page, and anybody who shares it, uh, for you to view it anytime uh, that's convenient for you. And so, uh, again, uh, praying for you. Hope you guys are doing well uh, out there. And uh, we certainly want to ask God's blessings as we get started here. You can turn to the book of James, chapter 1. James, chapter 1. I want to talk to you about trials tonight. I know uh, we are all going through a trial right now. We're going through a time of testing, a uh, period of pressure. Uh, that word temptation carries with it in James the idea of pressure, being under fire. Bringing, being under pressure and uh, a lot of us are under the gun right now we, we, we're feeling that pressure not knowing there's so many things we don't know about this virus there's so many things that we have questions about I know you have worries and uh, maybe some of you are starting to feel the heat uh, with all this that's going on maybe you're worried to death and uh, but you know I promise you God has a plan and uh, I want to give you a, a correct way to look at your trial tonight this trial that we're facing uh, your home, our church, this trial that we're facing right now, God has a certain way he wants us to look at it. And the Bible tells us that in the book of James chapter 1. And so at this time, let's bow our heads and pray and we'll read the scripture. Uh, Father, we come before you tonight and we just ask your blessings. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would just help us now as we uh, try to uh, be encouraged in your word, Father, Lord, that we uh, have a right view of the trials that we're facing these days. Uh, Lord, that we would, uh, Lord, combat it scripturally, biblically. Uh, Lord, that we would come under your word, Lord, that it would, uh, Lord, just penetrate our hearts tonight and we would chew on this all week long. And Lord, I pray, Father, for uh, your church tonight, Lord, wherever they may be, Lord, we pray you take care of their needs and Lord, meet with them in a special way. And Lord, we'll thank you for that. Bless the preaching of your word. In your name we pray, amen and amen. I want to read in James chapter 1, the Bible says in, in verse 1, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad, a greeting. Now, the tribes were scattered uh, as a result of persecution. So this is a time of persecution, the Jewish church there. And James is writing to encourage them, and he's going to talk a lot of, a lot of things, uh, about a lot of things. Of course, it, what James is often called the book, the uh, Proverbs of the New Testament. Uh, he talks a lot about wisdom and things like that. But they're going through a time of persecution, and he's ha having them look at persecution through a biblical view. He's having them put on the Bible glasses. You know what I think we need to do tonight, church? I think we need to put the biblical glasses on and look at this trial through the lens of the Word of God. And that's what we want to do tonight. Uh, notice verse 2. He says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. That's a multitude or plethora of all kinds of troubles and pressures. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to, to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is uh, like the wave of the sea, driven uh, with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat 
But it withereth the, the, the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, uh, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And I actually was supposed to stop at verse 12, uh, so uh, let me read that again. Uh, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So we've already prayed tonight, but as we look at this, uh, I want to give you some perspective in the midst of your trial. And there's several things that God commands us to do in the midst of our fiery trial, in the midst of the pressure that we're facing. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of fears. You know, uh, what, what's going to happen uh, to our homes? What's going to happen to our jobs? What's going to happen uh, to our country and our nation and our economy? And all kinds of things that we've been worried about and I've been preaching about these last few weeks uh, in, in sermons entitled, It's Going to Be All Right. And uh, I want to kind of extend that idea that it's going to be all right. Even in the midst of our trial, it's going to be all right. And God gives us a different way of looking at this trial. Yes, we're all in it together. We're all in this together. We're all facing the same trial with the coronavirus tonight. Uh, maybe different aspects of it we face that maybe somebody's not facing or you may be facing a different aspect of it than what we are. But the point is, we, we all are under fire tonight. We're all under pressure tonight. And we all find ourselves under this heavy weight, this heavy trial that's about us. So how do we look at it? How do we look at it? There's a way to look at it that God wants us to put our biblical glasses on and look at it the way he would have us look at it. And so there's a few commandments that is given to us, and you can find them in the passage that we just read. So first off, he tells us what to do with those trials and tribulations. He wants us, number one, to count. Notice there in verse 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy. So we're to count. The word count means to evaluate and consider. Now what this is is a stepping back. It's because, to be honest with you, this is a pill that... I don't think a lot of us like to swallow because think about it. He just asked us to rejoice in the trial. I mean, he's like, well, what are we talking about here, Lord? I mean, count it all joy. We're to be excited about this heavy trial that's about us, about this heavy weight, the pressure that's on. We're to be excited. How can we count this joy? How can we count the coronavirus as joy? What is there to rejoice over in the midst of this? Well, the natural human response to trials and tribulation is not to rejoice. This is the exact opposite of how we feel when they're in the midst of storms of life and, and trials and tribulations. So in this passage, what it means for us is that you and I have got to make a conscientious commitment to face them with the joy of the Lord. We must count them. Now again, the word count is a command of God. We must count Step back, consider, evaluate, think about what's going on in our world today. Think about what's going on with this coronavirus. Think about the plan of God in the midst of that. What is God doing right now? Because nothing happens by accident. Nothing happens by trial, trial and error. We serve a God that does all things decently, decently and in order. Uh, he's a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. Though we may look around the world and may feel it, it's chaotic right now. God still knows what he's doing. So in the midst of our trial, we need to evaluate that point. What is God doing right now? God's working. God's doing something in my life when it comes to this. He's testing our faith in the midst of this trial. We need to think about that. Step back before we get way too overwhelmed and remember to rejoice in the Lord. God is at work some way, somehow. We know even in the storm, as we've heard in the last few weeks, God is still in control. We need to step back, evaluate it, and count it all joy. God is at work. Be rejoicing. I mean, I'm not talking about rejoicing in the coronavirus. We're talking about rejoicing in the Lord in the midst of the coronavirus. We can count on the fact that Jesus is at work in the midst of this storm. And that, again, it's not just the coronavirus. It's any trial and tribulation we find ourselves in. We are to count it all joy in Christ. He's at work in our lives. He's doing something. Again, uh, he is in control. Joy should be the constant mode of the Christian. 
Whether in the valley or the mountaintop. Remember the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Now that rejoicing is found in the Lord. And I believe that's the same source of our joy here. To count it all joy. It's the joy of the Lord. It's the joy in the Lord. Knowing that he is in the midst. Working things out in the midst of this trial. We're to step back and evaluate and remember. Hey God's still in control. God is at work here. God is allowing this into our lives for a purpose and for a reason. And what is that reason? And he's going to give us a few possible answers to that in the text. But again, we are to rejoice in the Lord. Now, we may not be happy, but folks, we can always be joyful. Happiness is based on our feelings. Uh, joy is based in Jesus. Uh, understand, my joy is centered in Christ. Uh, you know, happiness is just a feeling. Uh, we may not be happy about what we're going through right now, but it should not rob us of our joy in the Lord. We can still have joy in the Lord. I'm rejoicing tonight because God is still in control over this virus. I'm rejoicing tonight that God is taking care of our needs. God is providing for us left and right. God is taking care for us. We're thankful that God's allowed us to continue to meet in the parking lot for drive-in church. And we're thankful for all the many blessings God's doing. He's keeping food on our tables and clothes on our back. We can rejoice in the Lord in the midst of this trial. Our joy is set in Christ. But then also knowing that God is at work in the midst of this trial. And he's doing something, not just in the world, but he's doing something in our personal lives. That's what this idea, to count it all joy, to evaluate and to consider what God is doing in our personal lives through this trial of the coronavirus, through this trial of the economy, through this trial of uncertainty tonight. God wants us to count it all joy, to make a conscientious commitment. Again, this is not something that comes natural to us. We have to make a conscientious decision to count it all joy. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, the Bible says, rejoice in Him. Again, we might be thinking this makes no sense at all. How can we rejoice? Well, we must look at Jesus' perspective, and we see that in verses 3 and 4. Notice there in verses 3 and 4 of our text. He says, knowing this. So now he's going to explain how we can have joy. What is God doing? Knowing this. That the trying of our faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What a wonderful passage. Of, what a wonderful promise here. He's telling us that God is at work in the midst of our trial, and we can count it on joy. Why? Because as a Christian, we can know some things. We can know that God is at work. Know that Jesus is using this trial to make us a better Christian and a stronger Christian. You see, just as weight, uh, a weightlifter uh, faces physical exertion uh, of exercise and pain to gain strength, so it is in the spiritual life. No pain, no gain. Okay? Uh, we become stronger through our trials. We become better children of God. You know, uh, I told y'all, I've been telling Facebook, the Facebook world through some personal videos and stuff, uh, that I've been trying to lose weight. Uh, I'm now at 12 pounds. I lost 12 pounds. I started the journey, I was 299 pounds, and now I'm at 287 pounds, thank God, I'm trying to get down to 240. Now, this is hard work. What I discovered is we, me and my wife committed to walking uh, four miles a day. Uh, I discovered there was some pains in my leg. I'm telling you, it got to a point one day, my wife will, will tell you, uh, where I, it, I almost couldn't hardly walk a bit more because I had a pain coming up from my ankle to my calf, and man, it hurt. It hurt, and boy, it aggravates me. I said, how am I going to lose weight? But the fact of the matter is that pain was actually a good indication that the exercise was working. And as you can tell, I got on that scale uh, two or three weeks later and realized, hey, thank God here in the last month and a half, I've been able to lose 12 pounds. But guess what? No pain, no gain. No walking, no losing of weight. No watching what you're eating. Oh, man, it's painful not to pass by the chocolate pie. It's painful. To pass by the chocolate chip cookies and the ice cream. Pain. Painful. No pain, no gain. Again, understand that, that pain is a part of growing as a Christian. Storms are a part of God's ingredient to making us stronger and, 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 and allowing our faith to grow more and more each and every day through this trial. I want you to know, through this storm, this storm, this coronavirus storm is either going to make you or break you as a Christian. Man, as we trust Christ through this storm, 
as we begin to expand our faith, we become stronger and more powerful Christians. We become powerful children of God. We strengthen our faith muscles through this time. Is it painful? Yes. Is it, is, do we feel the pressure at times? Yes. But we keep our trust and our faith in God. And we count it all joy knowing that God is in control. And that God is at work in our lives. And he's trying to make us produce. Uh, he's trying to increase our faith and its strength. He's trying to make us better Christians. Better children. We may feel uh, hurt and abandoned, but I'm telling you today, God's view, He is strengthening us. He is making us better for His glory. I often think about my coach in high school. He enjoyed making us run suicides, and I hated them things. And those of you in the sports world, you know, they were aggravating, man. And they, they were, I mean, a lot of sweat and blood and tears, man, uh, trying to get yourself fit, ready to play center and basketball there at my high school, JCA. And, and I, you know, all that hard work. And, uh, and, and look, that particular year that I'm thinking about, we, we came in second place in the championship. We went from last place all the way to second place. And in order for that to take place, we had to go through all those exercises and all those pains. You see, I thought the coach was hurting me. I thought the coach had lost his mind. The fact of the matter is he was making us a better and more well-equipped team. I'm telling you, that's what God's doing in our life. We may feel it's rough and it's tough and it's hard right now through this coronavirus scare and this trial that we face. But trust me, God is at work. He is doing something. He's trying to strengthen our faith. He's trying to strengthen our relationship with Him. I'm telling you, you're going to come out of this either a weaker Christian or a stronger Christian. You're going to come out of this as someone who failed the test or passed the test. And I ask you a question, are you passing the test? Are you failing the test? Are you counting all joy? Are you realizing that God is at work? Knowing, knowing, again, let me read that for you in verse 3. Knowing this, this is a fact. Knowing that the, the trying of your faith worketh patience. The word knowing there is in continual action. What it's saying is we need in the midst of this trial to continually be counting it all joy, but also knowing that God is at work. I have to remind myself of that every day. Because the news gets me down. And the news kind of puts the pressure back on me. But then I have to continually combat that with a fact. And the fact is that God's still in control and He is moving in the midst of my life. He is using this trial to strengthen me. He's using this trial to strengthen you as the church. And so we need to understand that tonight. We are to know. So we're to count some things. We're to count it all joy. But then we're to know some things. And the know is to, to know that God is working uh, for our benefit. He's working to make us stronger. He's working to increase our faith and our strength in Him. Again, the testing of our faith in verse 3 here, it produces endurance and perseverance. The word patience there. The word patience. Trials come and all they do is test our faith in God's ability. Trials should bring us to waiting on God. And that's what we see there in verse of chapter 1. You see that, that, that the trying of our faith, it worketh, it continually worketh uh, patience. We understand there that God is trying to produce uh, a, a waiting faith on Him. We don't know when this is going to be over. But every day that this is over, we have a test. And God wants us to pass it. And that path, that test is producing strength and endurance. It's a process. Just going back to exercising. I started on the treadmill. I wanted to go full blast. I cut that thing on five and I started running. And I'm, oh, 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 oh my God. You know, I, I, had, to, I had to really, I thought I was going to die. So I finally had to slow it down a little bit and work my way up. Now I've gotten to where I can run steady paces of time on that treadmill. It took time. It took time of working and conditioning. And you know, that's the same way it is in the midst of this trial. It's going to take time for us to get through it. But as, as the time passes, God is trying to each and every moment strengthen us and make us stronger for the next trial that may be even bigger than this one. One thing for sure, when the next trial rolls over, we'll be ready if we pass the test. Again, this is what God's trying to accomplish in our life. And this is what we as Christians have to know. He says, knowing this, trying of our faith, worketh patience, endurance, and perseverance. 
God wants us to persevere. He wants us to continue. He's trying to strengthen us through this trial. I thought of the oak tree. You know, the oak tree only gains strength through the storm. They say when a storm comes, the oak tree's roots grow even deeper into the ground. So God wants us to know He is working. He is teaching us to patiently wait on Him and to helping us grow as mature Christians. It's only as the trials and the storms of our life come that we begin to sink closer and closer into the root known as Jesus Christ. Like that oak tree, we as Christians sink into the root of Jesus Christ and we go stronger in Him and able to withstand the stronger and mightier winds that come our way in our lives. You know, as I look back at my life over and over, I see trial after trial after trial after trial. I remember, uh, you know, growing up, the, the trials, you know, of, of, of finding who I'm going to marry. And for years I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. You know, the, the trial of, of what I'm going to do with my life. You know, worried to death what God's will was, you know. Uh, and, and, and then the trial of, of whether or not we were going to have children. For six years we prayed. And, and, you know, again, you know, trials come in all shapes, sizes, and forms. And it just seems like my life has been filled with them. You know what? God never promised us, uh, you know, a field of daisies when it comes to life. He said, in the world, you'll have tribulation. But then he said, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. And this is where we need to find that count it all joy and to know that he's at work in our life. He's trying to make us better. Quit looking at this virus as a, as a negative thing. And I know it's terrible that people are dying. I'm not trying to belittle that. But I want us to look at the flip side of this matter and look at it the way God sees it. What is God doing in our personal lives right now? How is he using this to strengthen our faith? Buddy, I believe he's doing it. Again, we are to know that he's trying to make us stronger. He's trying to produce endurance and perseverance and strength in us. God wants us to know that he's working. We need to know that today. We need to count it all joy. And what do we need to count it? Why? Because God's at work knowing that our faith being tried produces perseverance and strength. What else do, do we see here? Verses 5 through 8, we're to ask. So we're to count, we're to know, but then we're to ask. Look there in verses 5 through 8. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind of the toss. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And what is the Bible saying here? You know, and again, this is, this is probably where some of us fall tonight. Uh, and that is, you know, we, we question, why is all this happening? Why is all this going on? And God says we're to count it all joy because, hey, and to know that he's at work. We can be rejoicing to know that God is in control and he's doing something in our personal lives through this trial and through this tragedy, through this storm in our life. But then there comes a point in time in our Christian walk where sometimes we may not truly understand all that God is doing. And now I have to say that in these days, we have to sit back and wonder sometimes, well, what is God doing? Well, this is where asking comes in. The Bible says if we lack wisdom here, to ask God. It's in context of trials and tribulations. Lord, maybe we need to pray and say, Lord, Lord, help me to have your understanding. Help me to have your wisdom. You know what the Bible says? If you ask for wisdom, God will give it to you. He says, ask it in complete faith. We see the warning here. He says, don't be like the man that's like it, the don't be like the waves that are tossed to and fro. Don't be double-minded. Because God says, come to me in complete faith and talk to me. And the Bible says he will grant us wisdom. And I think today that maybe many of us need to pray that prayer uh, that if we've not already. We need to pray, God, what is your will here? What is your direction here? We're to ask God for wisdom. Wisdom to understand what is going on and for his guidance in the midst of the storm. Lord, where do I go with all this? What do I do with all this? Ask God for guidance and wisdom. You see, that's what he's going on. Well, again, how do we look at these storms? How, what's the perspective we need to have? Well, you count it all joy. Uh, we need to know that he's at work. He's doing something to strengthen our faith. Uh, but then, uh, if we find ourselves in uncertain waters, we find ourselves, uh, you know, Trying to figure out what's going on. God says, ask for wisdom. Ask for direction. 
Uh, we are to ask God in complete faith. God desires for us to come to him in the midst of our troubles. He will give us direction. This is wonderful here because in the midst of the storm, the trials and tribulation that James is talking about, God says, I want to talk to you. God says, I want you to come to me and ask for wisdom. You know what, folks? It's a wonderful truth here. In the midst of this trial, in the midst of this storm, we can come to God. We can talk to Him. We can come to Him with our need. And again, our greatest need is to say, Lord, what is it that you're doing? What do you want me to get from this virus? What do you want me to get from this tragedy that's all around us? I mean, everybody's being affected by this. I mean, the, the stay-at-home rules and, and, and all the, the, the fear uh, that the media is, uh, I think sometimes the media kind of plays it up a little bit, uh, but there, there is a certain fear there, and, and we, we tend to, to, to get a little worried about that. And in the midst of that, we need to be asking God for his wisdom to look at this trial through his eyes. That's what wisdom is, looking at things through God's eyes, applying biblical truth. Again, that's wisdom. In the midst of the trials... God says, I'll give you wisdom. I'll help you understand it the way I see it. Again, tonight, do you need wisdom in the midst of this storm? Are you finding yourself scratching your head? Lord, what are you doing? What are you trying to teach me through this? I mean, here, we know, we know. He says, knowing the trying of our faith worketh patience. God's at work. He's at work right now. As I'm speaking to you, he's at work in your life. He's trying to produce Something. He's trying to make you a better Christian. He's trying to make Pastor Henry a better pastor and a better Christian. In the midst of this, we have the opportunity. If we're scratching our heads, we can ask God for wisdom. The Bible says he'll give it to us. So we're to count, we're to know, we're to ask. But then, fourthly, we're to depend on him. That's kind of, a, a, kind of right in what we just talked about. But look there in verses 9 through 11. Very interesting verse. A lot of folks to speculate what it means. Uh, but here, verse 9, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof faileth, uh, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. And so what is he saying there? Trials come to everyone. He talks about the rich man. And then he talks about the poor man. Trials come to every man, whether they're rich or poor. Both must depend on God in their storms. I think that's the application being made here. Both of them, uh, no matter whether you're rich or poor, trials come to you. Uh, you know, some people say, well, trials never come to the rich. Yes, they do. Uh, trials come to the poor and the rich. Trials come to the white and the black. Trials come to, to the Americans as much as trials come to the Germans. Uh, we need to understand that trials are a part of life no matter who you are. And the fact of the matter is we must depend on God through them no matter who we are. Trials make all believers equally dependent on God and bring them to the same level with each other by keeping them from becoming preoccupied with earthly things. Trials remind us of our need of Him in our lives. It reminds us of who we are without Him. Help us. Help us. One person has said this, and I actually have this on a plaque on my desk in my office. It says, trials are not enemies of faith, but are opportunities to prove God's faithfulness. Trials are not enemies of faith, but are opportunities to prove God's faithfulness. And so what we see here is the rich man and the poor man, without God, they are totally helpless. And they need God in the midst of the storm. I'm telling you today, we can depend on Him. You want to know why? We can count it all joy. Knowing, knowing that God is at work in the midst of this trial in our life. He's wanting to grow us. He's wanting to strengthen us through this coronavirus spirit. He is at work in your personal life, in my personal life. And if we don't understand all that, we can ask him. But the wonderful truth here is, no matter who we are, we can depend on him through this. Look, he's trying to do something. We may not know exactly everything it is he's trying to do in our life. We know he's trying to make us better. We know that. But we know we can depend on him through this. We know that whether we're rich or poor, whether we're white or black, no matter who we are, what we are, no matter what our last name is, we can depend on him through the midst of our trial. We are in the palm. If you're his child, we're in the palm of his hand. We've not left his eyesight. We can trust him to know that he is doing things for our very best. So we're to count it all joy. We're to know that the trial of our faith 
worketh perseverance and endurance and strength. We're to ask God for wisdom if we need to do that. We're to depend on Him. But then lastly tonight, verse 12. Let's read verse 12 one more time. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which is the which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now notice here, we're to keep on. So we're to count it all joy. We are to know that, 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 that God is at work in our life, that he's, he's producing us, making us a better Christian, a stronger Christian. Uh, no pain, no gain. We understand that God is at work in our personal life. We are to ask God for wisdom if we need it, and we're to depend on him no matter who we are. But then finally, we're to keep on. And I know we get so stir crazy right now. I mean, we thought that this thing would be over in a matter of a month, and now they've come out and said another month. And in some states, they're even saying another month. And we, I've heard articles this month and that month and this month and that month and we tend to get a little like oh my goodness how long is this going to last and sometimes we feel like that pressure of everything going on we're like how long can we keep going like this how long can our country survive like this how long can we as our own survive like this how can we keep on under this pressure and the bible says here we are to keep on in the midst of the storm we don't know when it's going to be over but it's, it helps us as we navigate to look at it through God's eyes. It helps us when we count it all joy. Our joy is in Christ to know that God's at work. He's doing something in my life and your life. Knowing that, 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 that the trying of our faith, that pressure that we're feeling, that trying of our faith as we continue to have our faith in Him. He's making us a stronger Christian. He's allowing us to strengthen our perseverance. That through the next, when the next trial comes, we'll be even better and ready, more prepared to face it. More prepared to face it. But then we can ask him for wisdom. We depend on him. And now because of all that, we can keep on. We can keep on. The Bible says, says here to keep on keeping on. Notice what he says there in verse 12. He said, blessed is a man that endureth. It literally means keeps on enduring temptation. He keeps on and on and on. He's like the energizer bunny with his faith in Christ. He continues drumming. He continues marching. He continues going forward. And that's what God desires of us in the midst of our heavy pressured storm. God says, keep on, Christian. Keep on, child of God. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give in because I am here. Keep on. There's a finish line. You know what? This coronavirus scare, there's going to come a time when it's over. I'm not going to sit here and put a date on it. I have no idea, but it will be over. I'm telling you, either that or Jesus is going to come and get us in the middle of it, and that's fine. Like we preached about this morning. But I'm telling you, it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be all right. And we can keep on. That's what the Bible says. He says the, we, are, we are to keep on keeping on in the midst of our trial. We are not to give up. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that this man is blessed. This man who keeps on in the midst of this trial is a blessed man or woman this morning. If you're in the midst of this trial and you continue to place your faith on him and you're counting all joy and you're seeking him for wisdom and you realize and you know that God is at work and you're resting in his ability to, to do what he's trying to do in your life. We're just resting on him. We know that he's doing something and we've asked him for guidance and wisdom and we're depending on him. We can keep on running. We can keep on in this midst of this storm because we know everything's going to be all right. We are knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel for the child of God. Blessed is the man that remains and stays the course is what God is saying. Blessed is the man who stays the course. Blessed is the woman who stays the course and continues trusting him through the storm. I love it. For when he is tried, when you pass the test, he says here in verse 12, you will be rewarded. There's a crown of life. Folks, let me tell you, we don't run. And, and when we get to the end of that, that finish line, it's not that we're going to have empty hands. We're going to be rewarded. There's a reward to be had for all who pass the test. God says to keep on keeping on. Keep on running. The promise tonight is hinged. Notice what the promise is all hinged on here in verse 12. The Lord has promised to them that what? Love him. The promise tonight is hinged on our love for God. When we love the Lord, we will serve Him through thick and thin. We will not give up and we will not give in. We will keep on until we see Him face to face one day. Why? Because we love 
him. You know, it's amazing to me the amount of people who throw in the towel in trials and tribulations. I know a lot of people who darken the door of church. When things start to go wrong, they immediately want to throw in the towel. You know, I'm telling you folks, our love of God should keep us going. Why do we keep going to miss this trial? Because we love him. That's, it really it links back to count it all joy. Our, our love and our joy is centered in Christ. We keep on because we know that he is in control of it all, folks. He holds this world in the palm of his hand. And I can trust him. And though I don't understand everything that's going on, I know that this trial, he's molding me and making me into what he wants me to be. He's strengthening my faith. He's, I know that tonight. I've counted all joy. I know it. And I know tonight that I can go to him and I can talk to him and ask him for wisdom in the midst of this and I can depend on him and I can keep on why because I love him you see our love it's the hinge of this entire promise in this passage do we love him like we should a lot of times we throw in the towel because we don't love God like we should I'm not saying that's every time but what he's saying here right now in this passage is he's going to give it to him that loves God Tonight, are we running in the midst of our storm with our eyes focused on Christ? Do we love him tonight with all our heart, mind, and soul? Because that's going to keep us running. That's going to keep us going. As we go through this life, it's not a question of if, but of when we face trials. We must keep our eyes on him. Notice in verse 2, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. He's, he's not saying if, he's saying when. Uh, we understand that trial is going to come and go. This coronavirus trial is going to go. Then there's going to be something else come. It may even be bigger. We need to be understanding. We need to face it with our eyes on him. And look to him in our trial with the right perspective, the biblical glasses. We look at it the way God looks at it. We won't blame God, but it will cause us to draw closer to him. And I want to encourage you in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic to cling to God. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. He says that in this book, in fact, in chapter 4. We understand that God has a purpose. He has a plan. I don't understand it all. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I do. But I do know this, that I can count it all joy because he knows what he is doing. He knows He's working in my own personal life. He's working in your personal life. And if I don't understand that all, I can ask him for wisdom. And I can depend on him. And I can keep going. Because I love him tonight. There is victory. Christian, there's victory in this. You may not see it right now, but there's victory. Let's keep on. Keeping on for him. Put on our biblical glasses. And look at trials the way God sees them. Count it all joy. Well, let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the promises. We thank you for the direction in the midst of this fiery trial, in the midst of these, this pressured time. Lord, I pray that we would look at the trials as you would have us look at them. Lord, I pray, Father, we would count it all joy. I pray that we would know that you're working in our lives. I pray, Father, that we would ask for wisdom when we need it. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to depend on you no matter who we are. And Lord, I pray that we would keep on keeping on. Lord, help us. Help us to love you like we've never loved you before. And may that spur us to continue on in the midst of this trial. To know that you're doing something awesome in our life. If we can see what you see from your vantage point, we keep on. Lord, help us. And Lord, when we come out on the other side of this trial, Lord, we'll be stronger and better Christians. And Lord, we'll thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Lord, keep us safe during this, these times. In your precious holy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I will see you guys at a live stream on Wednesday for Wednesday Bible study. Uh, remember, your pastor loves you. You can call me if you need me, and we'll talk to you all later. God bless, and bye-bye.